Hi there, I hope you're well. In this video, I'm gonna have a go at cutting dovetail joints with a plunge saw. All right, let me stop you right there. I know this is a silly idea. You don't need to tell me it's a silly idea. So this all came about from when I did my little uh, birch fly boxes. When I made those, I cut rebates around the faces using a plunge saw, using a track saw and the MFT or multifunction table. I had a couple of people comment, wow, I didn't realize you could do that. Uh, with an MFT, how about more complicated joints like dovetails? Ugh. Again, it's a silly idea. I hadn't actually considered that at all. And yet, the more I thought about it, the more it got me thinking, well, how would you do that? And I had a quick play around with this the other day and came up with this quick little test piece. So I thought I'd just give it another go and explain to you about the process, about how I would go about doing that, and also to explain why it's not a particularly good idea to do it. If you're new to woodworking or if you don't know what a dovetail joint is, it's a little bit like a box joint, but instead of the pins being all straight, they're sort of splayed slightly like this. You have a pin and a tail. These are the pins and you have a tail that fits into that. And because they're splayed like a dove's tail, it means it gives a joint a certain amount of mechanical strength. It was very important when glues were made by having something furry boiling away in a pot on a bench somewhere. I think it's less important these days. Uh, now we have very strong glues. I think personally it's become more of a decorative joint rather than a physically strong joint. Now I've got to be honest, these uh, dovetails that I made as a test piece yesterday are the first ones I've cut in about 46 years, certainly since I left school. That's I'm not wearing that like a badge of office. It's just I didn't do the kind of cabinetry where people asked for these, it's simple as that. So let me show you how I've got this set up. I'm gonna do the, the test dovetails in a piece of uh, Finsa fibre color in anthracite, the same as my benchtop material, and a piece of birch ply. Uh, I'm using those because it's a nice contrast, and also I'm hoping that the darker color of the anthracite uh, fibre color will hide some of my dodgy chisel work. Um, I've got the bench here, set uh, a couple of dogs in the bench and a guide rail and that will give me a 7 to 1 angle uh, on the dovetail. I'm using a little piece of scrap to protect the bench top and another one just to balance things up. A balance board at the back there and then I can align the work piece or work pieces against each other like this. I've got a little stock in the bench here just to keep that tidy because I'll need to flip this around. I can lock that off. You can think about getting started. So for a joint like this, fairly obviously, you need two different sort of cuts for the two halves. You need a an angled but perpendicular cut for the pins, which is what I'm going to be doing here. And you need a beveled cut, but straight, for the actual tails. I'm actually going to use two saws for this because there's a little bit of fiddling around involved when you're trying to do this with a track saw. A little bit of trial and error, which I've already done and you don't need to see that. So I'm going to use one saw for the pins and the other for the tails. And because I've already done a test with this, I've got the angles all set up uh, and the starting point marked on the workpiece. And I'm just going to make a single cut with that and then I'm going to use a couple of bits of scrap, uh, 25mm scrap, just to step the rail across from that first cut uh, to do each consecutive cut. Then we can change the angle of the rail and do all the others. So that's what I'm gonna do next. I've already set the saw for the depth of cut, so it's just a matter of stepping the rail across the workpiece to get consistent results. So there's the first three cuts on my pins. We're just going to reposition the bench dog to the other side of the center line now. And we can do the other half of those using the same uh, set of stops, the same half a dozen pieces of little scrap and off-cut of birch ply. And we can do those three 
and then we can just hog out the waste between those. Taking out the waste next, I'm just adding a few pencil marks to make sure that I take out the right ones. Oh, that's not so bad. Didn't quite get them even side to side, doesn't matter. It's just a proof of concept test piece, of course. If I was doing this properly, we'd have spaced those out with a set of dividers and all that. But yeah, okay, that's all right. I can use this now to mark up the birch ply uh, for the tails and then get those cut and they'll be with a bevel cut with the other saw. I'll be working off the pencil lines, so I'm extending the line down the edge of the board and then onto the other face using a sliding bevel to keep the angle consistent. And making sure the waist is clearly marked so I know which side of the line I'm cutting. To avoid tear out on the birch ply, I'm sticking a scrap of Fibricolor MDF to the back face with double sided tape and then I can line the rail against the pencil mark using a square against the splinter guard to keep it square against the workpiece. With the saw bevel already set, I can cut the angles on one face, then spin the work around, attach another piece of scrap, and cut the other half of the tails. Back to the straight saw now to make the trenching cuts and the waste. And then roughly break them out. All right, so that's fairly successful. The tails are looking pretty good. Uh, I need to clear out the waste in this, and then we can offer that up against the pins just to have a rough idea of whether or not it's gonna fit. Uh, we won't get a full fit until we get the, uh, the the middle of the pins cleared out as well. What I'm going to do with this is I'm just going to clamp a piece, I've got a piece of 22mm MRMDF with a nice square edge on it. I'll just clamp that up against the bottom of the tails and that will help guide the chisel down and I'll put that against a piece of scrap on the workbench just to protect the bench a little bit. But basically we'll clear that out, we'll offer that up as a test bit and then we'll see what we need to do from there. Uh, not so bad, come up nice and clean on the shoulders. Um, <laughs> I was putting it together as a quick test and thought, oh, it's a bit, uh, it's a bit snug on one side. I realised I had it back to front. But overall, I mean, it goes in. It's not a, it's not a fantastic fit and you're not going to get any closer than that. <laughs> that's for sure. Um, but for my first dovetail in 46 years, I'm happy enough with that. So I'm going to clean up the bottom of these uh, tail sockets. I don't know what they're called, tail mortises, whatever. Uh, get those cleaned up and then we'll see how well it fits together properly and then we'll uh, wrap this up I think. MDF is nice and soft but the shoulders and pins clean up pretty well and the overall fit is okay. Certainly decent enough once I've put on a dab of glue, squeezed them together and applied a bit of wax paste finish. Yeah, all finished up as it would be on a piece of furniture. I'm keeping my distance 
<laughs> I don't want you to get too close to it. Um, it's it's obviously after 46 years, far from the best set of dovetails you will ever see. Um, however, I'm not ashamed of it. I'm not exactly proud of it either. And I think, uh, if anything, this little video proves that whilst yes, it is technically possible <laughs> to make a set of dovetail shaped joints with just a plunge saw and a couple of chisels, you probably not something you should be attempting. Um, if that's, if dovetails are something that you need to do, then obviously either buy a router and a jig and do it that way or learn how to do it by hand. Uh, although it's, it is technically possible to get a dovetail shaped joint uh, with just a plunge saw, as, as we've shown today. Um, anyway, I'm going to call this one done for this week. Thank you very much indeed uh, for taking a look. As I said at the start of the video, I'm not suggesting by any stretch of imagination that this is the way to do dovetails, not at all. Uh, it was just a little bit of fun in response to a couple of comments that I had, which just got me thinking about the other possibilities, the other potential of you know, a plunge saw and an MFT style top and a couple of simple little jigs and clamps and things. And you can actually do remarkable things, even if this has no <laughs> real serious application. Um, I'm going to call this one done for this week, though. Thank you very much for taking a look. Thank you, as always, to my amazing Patreon supporters and YouTube members and members of the new 10minuteworkshop.com platform as well. More on that in a future video. But I think I'm going to call this one done for now. Uh, next video will probably be the DIY rail hinge that I've been talking about for a little while, both on the Patreon and uh, YouTube members platform and also on Instagram. If you follow me on Instagram, I post there daily and there's been all kinds of bits and pieces about the DIY rail hinge. Uh, but that's it for this week. Thanks for taking a look. I'll see you in the next one. All right, take care.